Hey there guys, hopefully you just finished the Atwoods machine lab, so let's go over a little bit of what you would have found in there. Uh, first we need to talk about the name. Uh, what you were using was actually a modified Atwoods machine. Typically if you just say Atwood machine, people think of a pulley. So imagine there's a pulley and you have a rope hanging from either side with two different masses we'll call mass 1 and mass 2. And by changing the uh, mass of these two, you can do experiments with the acceleration and forces, etc. Uh, very handy for demonstrating uh, concepts regarding force. But obviously that's not what we used exactly. The modification that we used is instead of another hanging mass on one side, we had a cart hanging on one side. So notice these are pretty much the same, except instead of this mass, now we have a cart attached to the pulley and the mass. Now, let's jump right into what we should have found. So let's look at part one first. So in part one, let's do a quick recap of what was done in this part of the lab and to make sure you actually did it correctly. So you've got your cart, your hanger, and you put a couple slotted masses on top of the cart just like that. We were comparing in part one the force on the cart with the acceleration. So we had a motion sensor connected to a lab quest and that was measuring the acceleration for us and to figure out what force we were using we used the weight of this and remember that weight is a force and it's equal to mass times 9.8 meters per second squared so that's mass times the acceleration due to gravity and in case this video is very small for you, that's an equal sign there. So we're controlling the weight on this and we're looking to see what that does to the acceleration. Now one thing to note that's important is that we're keeping the mass of this entire system constant. We are never going to remove any of these slotted masses. We will move them from the cart to the weight hanger, but we will never just take one off completely. And what we should have found as we increase the force that is, we increase the amount of mass on this hanger, and thus the weight. As the weight increased, the acceleration of the cart increased as well. And we made a graph of this. And there are some important lessons to be learned from this graph. So first, uh, if I really, really wanted to focus on teaching you the physics of this situation, regardless of experimental design, I would actually have you reverse these for reasons that we'll see a little bit later. But for the purposes of our experiment, this is the way we need to graph this. This is the most accurate. And here's the reason. Anytime you make a graph of data uh, regarding an experiment, What's on the x-axis and what's on the y-axis is determined by what you did in your experiment. In this case, force is the variable that we controlled. We chose what force the cart felt by choosing what weight to put on here, how many masses to put on that hanger. And so, anytime you're in an experiment and you're choosing the values for a particular variable, we call that variable the independent variable and that's always plotted on the x-axis. So the independent variable. All right, we controlled the force. We had no control over the acceleration directly. We were just going to see what the acceleration was. We didn't know it could have been anything. For that reason, acceleration is called our dependent variable. It depends on what we do. Wow, my spelling inabilities just kicked in there. The dependent variable. 
So whatever we do to the independent variable will change the dependent variable somehow, and we're trying to figure out how that is. That's the whole purpose of the experiment. So in this case, we found that the relationship looked kind of like that. That as we increase the force, the acceleration increased as well in a linear fashion. And I don't know if you would have noticed this right offhand, but there is a very, very interesting feature of the slope in that the slope of this line is 1 over the mass of the system. And you can test this out for yourself with your own data. If you take the mass of that hanger plus the mass of the slotted masses plus the mass of the cart, and if you really wanted to get super technical about it, the mass of the string, but the fishing line that we used uh, can be ignored against the masses of all the rest of this. But if you add up all those masses and take one divided by that value, that should give you the slope of that line which is a very, very fascinating result, and we'll see what this means a little bit later. Um, and in fact, we can get, well, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. If we were to write an equation for this line, we would say that the acceleration is equal to the slope, so that's 1 over the mass times the force. And so if we were to put that together, we would get acceleration equals force divided by mass. And if we rearrange this, we would find that mass times acceleration is equal to force. This being Newton's second law of motion. Very, very fascinating result. All right, now let's look at part two. Equally good stuff there. So in part two, now we're going to be looking at acceleration and mass as our two variables. So we have a very similar setup. You guys are welcome for the display of artistic prowess you're getting right here. So we've got our setup. And we have a cart, again, with masses on it. And now this time, we're going to set up a certain amount of force from the slotted mass. So we still have our weight from this providing the force, and we're measuring the acceleration of the cart. But in this case, instead of moving the mass over here and increasing the force, we're going to be looking at just simply removing one of these slotted masses so that we reduce the mass of the entire system. So we do this first with a very heavy cart, then we take one off and have a slightly lighter cart, and then a lighter cart, and so on and so forth. And when we graph, and now again notice that mass was the variable we controlled, so it's the independent variable and must go on the x-axis and acceleration. Notice I've included the vector symbol because acceleration is a vector. And you should see something that looks kind of like that, which at first glance doesn't really seem to tell us much of anything. And then, if we were to change this, if we were to take, instead of plotting acceleration versus mass, we plot acceleration versus the reciprocal of mass, 1 divided by mass, all of a sudden this becomes a straight line. And even more interesting, if you were to find the slope of this value, the slope of this is actually the force. So if you calculated the weight of this mass hanging from that, uh, that would in fact be the slope of this graph. And again, if we were to write this out as an equation, acceleration equals the slope force times 1 over mass. We get the exact same result that we did last time. Again, rearranging our equations, we find that force is equal to mass times acceleration. 
So notice that both parts of this uh, just serve to confirm Newton's second law of motion uh, quite beautifully. Hopefully uh, that answers some of or any lingering questions you may have on that. Um, feel free to let me know what's still confusing.